Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm doing a gluten-free version to my hot cross buns. So many of my viewers have allergies to gluten and they requested this recipe. So I hope you guys enjoy it. It's really light, fluffy and delicious. So to start this recipe, we're doing it just like my other recipe, starting with lukewarm milk in a big bowl. And to that, we're adding some sugar and the yeast. The sugar is going to help feed the yeast so that it activates and it grows. It's going to look really foamy or frothy. If this doesn't happen for you after about 5 to 10 minutes, discard and start over with fresh yeast. So once it gets foamy or frothy, then it's time to add in the rest of ingredients. I'm going in with some freshly grated nutmeg. You guys know I always love to grate my nutmeg. And I'm also going in with some cinnamon powder if you wanted to add some allspice or some other flavorings you can in goes sugar egg melted butter and the melted butter is not hot you want it to be at room temperature some clear vanilla essence goes in and some mixed essence i like using the combination of both i love the flavor and the taste that i get from using both of them now I'm using my Danish dough hook here to help me mix this. And one thing I didn't put was that yellow food coloring. You can put it or you can omit it, but I'm just gonna add it in now and continue to give this a mix. Make sure that that sugar has been dissolved before you add any other dry ingredients. I'm going in with gluten-free flour, one cup and two cups of almond flour. You can omit the gluten-free flour and use all almond flour if you like. But I really like that it helps to hold the bun. In goes my xanthan gum and my fruits. And I'm using raisins and mixed peel. And mixed peel in the US, it's called holiday fruits. What you're going to do is go ahead and give this a mix. It's going to be very sticky. So you would want to use a spoon or a Danish dough hook. Something to help you bring it together without you having to mess up your hands. It's going to be a shaggy, sticky dough. So I'm going to mix it for about five minutes, after which all you have to do next is go ahead and cover it after it's been mixed in. So you see, you don't need to make it look perfect. Just cover it and allow it to rest for about 15 minutes. After it's finished resting, I'll remove the plastic wrap and then it will be time to form it into our balls. Now I'm gonna roll it out on my floured surface. This is just going to help make life a little more easier because of the softness of the dough. I'm sprinkling a little bit of dry flour, don't add too much. Just bring it together and then you wanna start opening it out into a log shape. So lightly flour your surface guys you see that shape a log shape and then all you have to do now is cut it into 12 equal parts after you have your 12 pieces you're going to roll it into a bowl if it's sticking to your hand you can probably try greasing your hand slightly or using a little bit of dry flour but you really don't want to put too much of dry flour and these go into your greased baking pan and they're going to take about one hour probably hour 15 minutes to rise so you're going to cover them and allow them to rise for that time if they rise faster of course you take them out and you put them to bake but mine's actually took an hour and 15 minutes you don't want to rush these remember they are gluten free so these bake while they're baking at 350 degrees fahrenheit for about 20 25 minutes let's make the syrup i'm adding in my sugar and my water to my pot and i'm going to boil that until it's thick you just want it to be really sticky you don't want it to crystallize so once it's nice and sticky go ahead and set that aside and allow it to cool down next let's make the icing for the cross so to my icing sugar or confectioner's sugar or powdered sugar i'm adding in my milk and you want to add your milk a little at a time and mix 
and as you're mixing if it's still dry you add a little more and a little more until you get the consistency of toothpaste this is what it should look like if it's if it's thinner than this it's just going to run right off of the buns when the buns are finished you want to allow them to cool down properly before glazing them and putting that cross so once they're cooled go ahead and use your glaze and brush it over the tops of the buns and then go ahead and place your cross and that's it your hot cross buns are now ready you can have these i prefer having them while they're warm they taste really nice um after they sit out a while they tend to get a little heavier and um i guess i'll have to try to work on a better recipe for you all but just heat it up in your microwave and it's going to be perfect so i hope you guys enjoyed today's recipe if you make it let me know what you think thank you for requesting it thank you all for watching and i'll see you in my next video Bye everyone.